It's great to speak with you today, Connie, and looking forward to hearing your views today on how small, comp small Chinese companies and what they need to do to move forward with their businesses. Uh, can you first provide an introduction to this topic? Yeah, sure. But before I introduce the topic, I'd like to introduce myself. Otherwise, uh, you don't know why I talk in this way. Um, this is Connie Wu. I am an automotive purchasing professional with 19 years experience in the field of supply chain in automotive industry, including five years working in tier two European company and 14 years working in tier one multinational companies, covering machinery and equipment purchasing, indirect material and direct material purchasing, purchasing program management and supplier quality management. Before that, I was a teacher for seven years and spent two years working in manufacturing as an assistant to senior manager to prepare myself for necessary competence and skills for career development in multinational companies. Our conversation today will be from the second part of my career path. So generally, we buy to print, that means buy our own designing responsibility, or we buy to spec, that means the supplier own designing responsibilities. We source the supplier via 3C match, capability, capacity, commitment, capability to fulfill current demand and capability to learn, capacity to fulfill current demand and capacity to support future growing business, commitment to establish a sustainable supply chain with a total cost consideration Measurement is QCD, quality, cost, and delivery. Before talking about the pain point, I'd like to share some observation from my 19 years of supply chain developing. Hey, Dustin, it sounds noisy. Is it okay? Uh, I can hear you clearly. Good. Uh, sh shall I move on? Uh, yes, sure. Okay, thank you. I have a habit to visit the plant before reviewing a novel. And I always have a casual conversation with the owner of the company and the employees out of the meeting room separately during my visit. I visited the hangers of various plants like metal pots, plastic, laundry, electronic, rubber, chemical products, surface treatment, so on and so on. If I can see a layout at the entrance of a plant, exit and fire extinguisher can be easily found, I'm happy. If not, uh, I'll be a little bit nervous. From time to time, when I visited small and medium-sized uh, Chinese private companies, I see the in-house logistics is, is a maze. The production line is unbalanced from one station to the other, lack of IE concept, lack of human engineering consideration, machinery and equipment, preventive maintenance plan, lack of MRO path inventory management and emergency plan, incomplete motor profile, inspection tools, calibration not in the good check. When I talked to the management team, I could not see any collaboration between departments, between different functional roles. Since all in sales, no customer's requirement. The technical guy don't speak English, not able to directly communicate with foreign customers. And the sales guy is mostly major in business English. No engineering background not able to translate a technical solution professionally. What customers hear from the sales guy might not be the same as what's implemented in the company. This happened very often with the companies of which the owner doesn't speak English. Hello, Dustin. You can see uh, here? Um, yeah, that's, yes, please continue. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Chinese small private companies, they mostly start with buy-to-print business. A startup stage, the business we 
the business was not so so big, and the owner decided everything. Employees just implemented the orders from the owner. When business growing, the owner's time and knowledge is not able to cover everything. However, there is not a team to actively support the business consequence of rising therefrom. Um, product and service fail to meet requirements and shipment delay. Then you know it's not far away from being quitted. When the owner and founder is getting old, the next generation is not interested in taking over the business, the situation is becoming more critical. So from my perspective, the pain point for the small and medium-sized Chinese private companies mainly come from falling to areas. Firstly, hardware investment. Most of small and medium-sized companies invested the first fixed assets decades ago to buy communication or whatever macro and macro reasons the first building and the machinery and equipment were invested to meet the target that get on hand orders to be produced. When more orders came the next year, a similar investment concept repeated. That's why when we visited the plant with the, the in-house uh, logistics, it's like mm, just a mess. Yeah, there were also a few companies uh, who invested the first assets with a long, long-term view. And part of them have grown into big companies, but also the rest died um, due to whatever reason. So today, we just focus on those who survived the small and medium-sized companies. You know, at the early attempt, labor cost was much lower. Most company owners choose to invest a simple individual machine instead of a highly automated and integrated machine. When a machinery is not as smart as expected, we rely on experienced operators to make the parts controllable. Now, the labor cost is becoming higher and higher. Some experienced operators are becoming too old to continue the operation. And young generations, they are more interested in AI, artificial intelligence, instead of repeating the simple operation. Tools meant difficulties and sustainable deliveries become more and more critical day by day. Secondly, I think the pain point um, is from the organization development. In the past decade, the owner was acting as a superman or superwoman. He or she just controlled everything, decided everything. He or she drives the employees instead of coaching them, use people instead of developing them, takes the credit instead of giving credit. He or she always says I instead of saying we. When there is any opportunities, always prioritize the family employees or the relative employees. You know, and this level of working condition, I'm not surprised to see the employees react is just to get assignment done as told, not to strive for active. Cherish only the hope of avoiding mistakes. During my work, I saw some company owners inviting fresh blood from outside with very high payment trying to change the situation, but not many succeeded, unfortunately. Because of paying high, the hire's expectation to the hired is also very high. The hire and the hired tend to not consider the data out there, but you know conflicts are everywhere. Like, who can buy?
desire, the culture, the education and life background, personality, etc. and etc. Especially when the the hired is from a multinational company as a senior manager. You know, the hierarchy perspective is a superman or, or superwoman who can make things happen and meet the expectation overnight based on whatever was discussed during the interview. You know, that's impossible. And the higher this perspective is to meet the KPI and to get the salary paid. This, to me, it looks like a marriage without love. So divorce is no surprising result. My recommendation about the hardware investment is the lean mindset. Better to ask the following questions and get an answer with a 360 degree view by involving all stakeholders before spending any penny. Question number one, who is the customer, domestic and abroad? Question number two, what customers need, domestic and abroad? Question number three, what's the government regulation? local government and the target market regions and countries. Question number four, where are we? How far away from driving continuously the supply chain in the di direction of delivering cost, parts, service, safety, quality, speed, flexibility, innovation, and sustainability? to the specific market. Question number five. How can we meet the goal? Short term, mid term, long term, what we can do to fix the gap? Once demand is clear, plan is available, do it with a project management concept. I'd like to share a case that I recently handled, and I hope it can be some help to both the companies and the global sourcing staff. The product is not a complicated one, with about 10 assembly process. The first time I visited the plant, I saw huge waste in each process, like the zigzag in-house logistic, useless move back and forth between process unbalanced machine working time versus the human operating time, oddly designed picture further increased the, the operation time, etc. and etc. It takes me um, quite some time to convince the company owner there is a better solution with limited investment to get a part produced. After detailed discussion together with cross function team and the company owner, agreed all the implement action and um, with the handmade layout and fixture joints, I asked, do you understand? Answer yes. And then I asked, how long you can get the agreed job done? Answered, five weeks. Hmm. I was asking for a regular update each Friday and wrote down everything in a meeting minute. At the end, all the machines and fixtures modification finish it. But one week behind the sketch, hmm, not too bad. They visited the company again. Uh -oh, I was really shocked. When I see the machine operation panel was built two meters long, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's much longer than operators arm length, but the that machine was designed for one operator. That means if we still assign one operator to operate that two meter long operation panel, the operator need to run back and forth all the time. Uh, that's a huge waste. But anyway. 
anyway, now I am um, very happy to tell you the modified production line saved two labors and increased the output four times. The project team is carrying this uh, experience and lessons learned to other products. I do hope that they can do it better and better with all the experience from the uh, previous project. So I think trick suppliers as business partners, give them a hand, we are benefit from a win-win solution. About the organization, that meant I'd like to remind the company owners there is no superman or superwoman in the world to boost an inspiring working condition and to drive the work spirit. That's the key solution. I'd like to share another case. I am one of the board members of an executive MBI alumni association. Last year, I organized a peer consultancy to help an alumni owned the company for their organization redevelopment. We gave the owner good enough time to give us a brief introduction about his company. He talked about how he'd like to run the company, what's the problem, what he had done to help his employees, but results not as well as uh, expected. Then we raised one question to him. Do you know what's the employee's expectation? He was certainly silent. Since he never thought about this question, or maybe he thought what he was doing is what his employees want. Then we invited the three employee representatives to write down their expectation anonymously, anonymously outside of the conference room, secretly. And then I came back to the conference room and we continued the communication. After hard, deep intercommunication, the solution was available. And um, I'd like to tell that this company is um, global leadership in that niche market. And I'm looking forward to its um, more bright future. I do believe they can do it. So, above I discussed uh, and talked about um, uh, the pain point from my perspective and um, some recommendations um, based on my uh, supply chain developing working experience. I hope it can be some help. Justin, are you still there? Yes, thank you for sharing today, Connie.